I just want to teach on the subject of faith, vision, and what you have. Faith, vision, and what you have. Uh, and we will take our scripture reading from Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, where it says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? And uh, I also want to read it in the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, uh, which kind of amplifies the very same verse. It says, just bear with me, it says, is anything too hard or too wonderful for the Lord? Now let me start off here and say, human beings um, matter to God. We matter to God. And uh, he gives meaning to our lives. God does that. Sometimes I think when we are overwhelmed by things in the world, you may be tempted to think that you are alone or that you don't matter. But we matter to God. He created us and he gives meaning to who we are. And if we go to Psalms chapter 8, let's look at how beautifully it describes this. Psalms chapter 8 verse 4 to 8, it says, What is... Man. Let me read it. It says, What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority. The flocks and the heads and all the wild animals the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. This is how much we matter to God. He made us like this. And we are unique compared to all other things in this world. Which means God has a standing desire to have a relationship with human beings or with us. And the word that we've read says he thinks about what are mere mortals that you think about them. That's because we have this significant relationship with God. We matter to him. Secondly, God cares for us. It says human beings that you should take care of them. God cares for us. And thirdly, God has a purpose for each one of us. He has a purpose for each one of us. Because what did he do? He, he gave us charge and put everything under our authority. The things that are in the world. There is nobody. There is no other form of creation that can manipulate and orchestrate the world into something different than human beings. Human beings can take gold and create jewelry. Human beings can take an orange and produce some juice. Human beings can take strawberries and produce jam. Human beings can take fur from, um, uh, from a ship and turn it around and create clothing and designs. Human beings have been given the ability to manipulate things by God because he has placed things under their authority. We matter to God. Even though sometimes we may think we don't matter. Circumstances and life sometimes is so tough such that you think you don't matter, there's no one out there. But actually, I want to say to you, just to remind you this morning, that you actually matter to God. You may have a strained relationship with God, but you matter to him. Right? If you hang on to that only. So, having said that, I want to talk about faith, vision, and what you have. And this is part one. We'll finish part two next week. The scripture that we read where in, in Genesis says, is anything too hard for the Lord, comes on the back of this conversation, which was part of the scripture reading, where God has promised Abraham a lot of things. He says he'll make a nation out of him. He'll give him descendants. And Abraham was very old, and his, they didn't have children with his wife. 
And God reiterates this message in Genesis chapter 17. He says, actually, I am going to give you a son and Sarah will bear you a son. There was a point where Abraham could not believe it himself, not because he didn't trust God, but he was saying, but I'm old. At my age, how can I even have a child? And God says, I will give you a child. And then one day God visits Abraham. And after Abraham has given uh, these, these angels some food, they say, so where is Sarah? And Sarah is standing and overhears God, the, this messenger saying, and this time next year she will have a son. And she laughs in her heart. But you see, she didn't realize that the God who can see in the innermost part of your life could see that she had doubts about what God was saying. What she didn't realize is this thing, that even in circumstances where things look impossible, when God has a purpose for you, he will make it happen. She didn't realize that. But God still had a purpose for her, even in her old age, and with all the challenges that she had, God still purposed to give her a son who would be part of fulfilling God's purpose through her. Now, many a times we find ourselves in that same position where we believe God wants to do something. Hey, oh, by the way, some of us don't believe God wants to do anything with us. Let me start there. You are here. Actually, if you are the sort of person who thinks God has got nothing to do with you, I really pray for you. Nobody is just here. You are here for a purpose. And it takes you connecting to God to understand what that purpose is. You will make mistakes. God is so forgiving. So she was looking at this and, and then God says, um, did Sarah just laugh? And she says, no, 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 I didn't laugh. And she says, actually, I did hear you. You, you did laugh. You did laugh. But anyway, this time, next day, you'll have a child. And there is, and then it says, is anything too hard for God? And this comes from a messenger who sits with God and know and the God who created the earth. This is, he created everything. Is there anything too hard for him? Or too wonderful? Because some people think, wow, this is this is too good for God to do. Some of you think like that, that I this can't come from God. This can only come from human beings. That's why, actually, these days, I'm on a crusade to deal with false humility. There are many Christians who, are, who, who like false humility. And they live a very inconsistent life. I was teaching about this on Wednesday. When they come to church, they wear this thing that I don't understand. It's an effort to look meek and humble and false, 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 false. When they come to church, they look like sheep, but find them outside. Yeah. They're full of energy. They're moving mountains and shaking things. But when they come to the house of God, man, they resign to see. They just look like something that resembles nothing. Because they think that other image that I really am is too wonderful for God to sustain. What God to sustain is this other thing here. That's why, can I tell you something? That's why you can't invite your friends to church because you know that it would be an effort for them to become like you here. Whereas if you are your saints, can you have any, a consistent life? What you are here in church is what you are outside. And God is using you the same way. Because the reason why it's like this here. It's because of what you bring here. Can we, when we go and say, I'm looking for John. <laughs> John Rangamanda at such a we say, Oh, John. You mean John that doesn't look? Yes, that's the John I'm talking about. Not, oh, you mean John. I'm like, no, 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 no. Not that one. The one who's humble. They say, no, <laughs> we don't know that guy. We have a John. The same surname, but he's slightly different here. You know why? You know why people are like that? It's because you don't understand 
what God's purpose is for your life. And you don't believe that God can use the wonderful thing that you are. So, Sarah couldn't believe it. She laughed, but there's nothing too wonderful and too complex for God to do. Now, here's the thing that I want to say to you. Some people, there are Christians who are on the wrong frequency and wrong channel. In communication, for people to understand each other, we must be where? Same channel and same frequency. Otherwise, we can be just talking at cross purposes. We may all have the same radio, and it may be tuned to the same sort of channel. But if you are on FM, you are not in the right place. If you are on AM, you are in the wrong place. If you are on media, okay, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Ne? You don't know. Those of us who are born with radios have no FM, shortwave, and AM, and whatever. But if you, we can be the same radio, same alignment of channel, but different frequency. There could be news at that time on that particular dial. Others, there could be music, depending on where you are. There are many Christians who are on the wrong frequency and wrong channel. Sometimes right frequency, but wrong channel. Not aligned. And therefore, when God speaks to their purpose, they don't get it. And what's the frequency that we're talking about? It is faith. Abraham was on faith. He walked with faith. If you want to have the same experience of God working in your life and delivering things, you must be operating on the basis of faith. That's the frequency we are on. As a result, if you are not on the faith frequency, I am afraid I am just talking to you. And in Hebrews chapter 11, Verse 1 to 2, this is what it says. It says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old and a good reputation. These people operated on the frequency of faith. That's why when God said to Abraham, go, he just said, I'm going. And he says, I'll make you the father of nations. He says, my wife has no children. She can't give birth to children. I believe I'll have children. When he says, I'll give you land, he says, I'll have the land. And he does what? He goes without more. That's the frequency. And the channel vision. You need to. You know, saints, it's well and good for you to operate in faith. But if you can't grasp the vision that God has for you, you are missing something. And you must pray for it. That's the challenge, the vision. Might you get to heaven by faith? Absolutely. But might you do things for God? I doubt it. Because you need to have the vision. Now, let's go to Habakkuk chapter 2. Let's look at what it says a vision is. It says, then the Lord said to me, let me read in the New King James Version. It says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Okay, Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. When God delivers on the channel for you, Hold on to it because it's talking about stuff that's going to happen. Now, the, a combination of the frequency and the channel is very dynamic. People who walk by faith and are clear about what God is saying to them, even when it takes time, they are going somewhere. It's not easy to hold on to the two things. It's not easy to walk by faith. It's not easy to walk on the vision of God. Because what God tells you sometimes does, in fact, most of the time has not even arrived. And sometimes you don't even have the wherewithal to deliver. I actually think about David. When, when he was anointed by Samuel to be a king, there was a king 
in place and the king was Saul. And he had an army. And, and I wonder what he thought. So I've now been anointed king. How do I even become a king? It takes being, be working on faith and understanding the vision. And here's the thing. It only works like that for God. If you're not on the right frequency and channel, you can miss out on what God wants to do with you. You can miss out. And we're laying the foundation for this thing. Now here's the thing. Seeing things from a human perspective only is very limiting. And I know most of us here are learning. You did so many theories at school. You know, education is meant to help you. That's why the world needs a lot more critical thinkers. Even the church needs more critical thinkers. When you learn something, it's meant to empower you. And then you must think about what it does. But if you only see things from a human perspective, then you're actually limiting your ability to understand what ought to happen in your life. Everybody, most people, have some element of spirituality in their lives. It's either it is driven by God or driven by other things. But spirituality is there. But when you see things only from a human perspective, then it's very limiting. Where we read where Sarah saw or all that Sarah could see was that she was old, advanced of age, she could not give birth to a child, and her husband was too old. In fact, by the time Abraham had a child, he was 90 years old. If you looked at that, objectively speaking, there was no way they could have children. In fact, if it was today, we would say this is absolutely scandalous. What is a 90-year-old and an 80-year-old doing having a child? Who's going to take them to kindergarten? What's going to happen? That's what we do when we look at things only from a human perspective. But when we look at it according to God's eyes, we, tend, we begin to be transformed in how we see things. You, you begin to believe because you are looking at it according to the author of the conditions of life. Jesus spoke and warned people about looking at things from a human perspective. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Verse 21 to 23. And we read here, and it says, From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord. He said, this will never happen. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are, you are a dangerous trap for me. You are seeing things merely from a human perspective. Jesus is starting to talk to his disciples, telling them, hey, guys, my agenda here, I'm not a political messiah. I'm here to die for your sins. And uh, in a couple of days, and time is coming, when I'll be nailed to the cross, I'll die, and on the third day, I'll rise. And Peter pulls him aside and says, hey, sorry, master. Look, you must not say things like that here. Uh, you can't be saying things like that here. It's very dangerous. And, and Jesus says to Peter, no, 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 Peter. You don't see what I'm talking about and get behind me. You are trying to stop me from delivering on my purpose. Your problem is you're seeing things from a human perspective. What Peter had in mind was, how can this Jesus who is so powerful, who does miracles and has, is a savior die on the cross? In fact, we're expecting you to liberate us. We're expecting a political messiah. And Jesus says, Peter, your perspective is limited. You are looking at this from a human perspective. And this is why it's limiting only to see things from what you know. And sometimes, when God reveals something to you, gives you a vision, it conflicts with your reality. And most of the time, we love our reality. Even the bad one, we love it. And it conflicts with our things because you say, but where are the resources? 
how am I going to become a business person? God didn't ask you about that. My background is too bad. How can I actually even be in the company of those good people? God didn't ask you about what company you come from. He says, you are going to be a king. You're going to be a king. That stuff conflicts with, with what God wants to do. And sometimes we're too married to the problematic things. Do you know that if human beings were too married to their present circumstances, they didn't, were not driven by vision, we wouldn't have any innovation at all. You know that? I mean, it would have been easy for Elon Musk to simply say, there are cars, man, there are cars, automobiles moving on diesel and petrol, and man, they are beautiful and fast. But he sat down and said, I have a vision. I can see a day where I can drive a car that is powered by electricity. And he began to put it together. Liri, Luna, Liri, hey, 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 this guy is wealthy. He said, yes, because he allows himself to see and run according to a vision. It is not limited by what you can see. And there are so many of us. God is giving you stuff, but you are telling him stories about your problems. How many of us love our problems? We love our problems. But we, we like looking after them. Our problems, we like them. How many of us come from that background? Uh -huh. And we want that page from that disadvantaged background. And we clap together because we're black, eh? black. Even when God says, get out of that race thing and move with other people who are not black. Oringi? I am Sutu. I run with the Basut. And God is saying, no, 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 forget about the Basut. I'm opening you up to stuff that God's got nothing with the Basut. When, when, when you take things, you are on a different channel. God is trying to elevate you to his channel. But I know why some of you are married to your problems. Because it is very tough to move to the unfamiliar. It's very difficult. It requires you to be what? To be bold. To move to what? To the unfamiliar. And God says, yes, you're trained to be a teacher, but I don't care. You are not going to be a teacher anymore. I want you to be a businesswoman. I don't have a degree. God didn't ask you about that. He gave you a vision to become a business person. Take that degree, hang it there. Do you even know where your degree certificate is? Do you guys know? Is what you're doing related to what you trained for? Do you know what's happening? God is transforming you. Why don't you allow yourself to be transformed even faster? And operate by what? By faith. Have you ever heard of somebody who starts something totally new? Who is certain? I, I listen to people of business people who are saying, I, I didn't know what I was doing. It's very risky. None of them tells you they spend eight hours sleeping. They have too much me time. It's not personal. I don't know your story. I'm just telling you, if you limit stuff to your human perspective, it's very limiting. Allow God to, to transform you. Now, nothing is too hard for God. And this is why I started. Nothing is too hard for God. We read, and it's a word that is said to Sarah. But we also find the same word in Jeremiah chapter 32. Let's go there. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17 and 27. And this is what it says. It says, Our sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and, and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. And in verse 27 it says, Therefore, this is what the Lord says, I will hand the city over to the Babylonians 
No, no, that's verse 28. It says, I am the Lord, the God of all the peoples of the world. Is anything too hard for me? I think it's too hard for God. Your world is not too complicated for God. It's not too complicated for God. Just because you have seen what it is that God wants to do. It's not too complicated for him to operate even on those bases. That's why if you understand where you're going to and how God works, you will bring all of these things that God has revealed to, to his hands and say, Father, you have opened my eyes to this and I know nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too complicated for you. Nothing is too wonderful for you. Even when you're being invited to operate only on the basis of rationality, you take it to God and say, Father, here I can see there's too much reasoning here, but I want you to open things for me. Open my eyes to what you're doing. You know, when Joseph arrived in Egypt, he confounded people who could advise the king about stuff because God had given him wisdom. And when the king ran out of solutions, he came with solutions. And where did the solutions come from? He had not been schooled in governance. He had not been schooled in the politics of Egypt. He had no connections, but God gave him the wisdom and he was able to explain dreams, basic stuff called dreams. He had the wisdom from God and he solved a problem. Sometimes we are too uh, uh, we are too protective of the things we have learned as if that's the sum total of who we are. But God can open your eyes to something else. If you trust God. If you trust God. Now, I want to finish off by saying a couple of things then we'll close. So there are two things before we can talk about the things that you have. You've got to work on the vision matrix of your life. Understand vision. What has God said to you? What has he revealed to you? God will not reveal anything unless he means to do it and bring it to fruition. What do they say in Zulu? God is not going what is, it? what is in Ghana in English? You guys are learning it. Oh, come on, guys. Uh, what is in Ghana? You know, we grew up with storytelling. What do they call it? Fairy tale. Yes. Thank you, my brother. There's a learned man. God doesn't tell fairy tales. When you listen to him, you're not going to grow horns. He's telling you something that's going to happen. When he says something, he means it to happen. That's the first point that you join in. Amos chapter 3. Let's go there. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. It says, Indeed the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. As a principle, he reveals things to us. And whatever he reveals, he means it to happen. The only issue is whether you want it to happen through you. And the second matrix here, which you must actually, is the faith one. Only those who have faith in God for the impossible will realize the revealed things of God for their lives. You have a choice, by the way. God can reveal things to you and you can choose not to believe. But there are those who choose to believe. And they do it. Because it says in Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, And it is impossible to please God without what? Faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. He rewards them with doing the things that he said he's going to do. He works on the basis of these two things. Vision and faith. Right? And here's the point about all of this for today. I can say this to you. What you see, what you hear, and think limits what you are today. What do you see? Hear and think limits what you are today. If you've set your ceiling right here in terms of your sight, your thinking, and what you're prepared to listen to, that's how far you will go. Saints, you can't pray yourself beyond where you are. 
Because what you see, you think, and you hear, and you act on takes you further. Second, you should not be defined by the world, but God has a plan. God has a plan for you. The world can say you are too black to succeed. You are black and proud. No. Don't allow the world to define you. Allow God to define you. Because God has taken people from nowhere to somewhere. Even those things which were said to be impossible, God has made them possible. You don't allow people to define how far you can go. But allow God to define how far you can go and what he wants you to do. Since not all of us are going to be known, can I say this? Here I'm not talking about fame. I'm just talking about basic things in life where God makes things possible. Where people say it's impossible. For people like you, no, it's impossible. And God says, but with you it's going to be possible. Don't allow people to define that. Define you. And the last point is, God's standard of greatness is different from that of the world. You see, God doesn't define us by how wealthy we are. God doesn't define us by what office we occupy. God doesn't define us by how notorious we are. I'm not saying naughty. But your name can just be known. God doesn't define us by our connections. There are simple things in life that God can do through human beings that are amazing and great. And that stuff that should drive us. You see, when you operate on that frequency of faith and the vision that comes from God, there are things that God does. All of a sudden, your life, which may look very difficult right now, can begin to change because you're allowing yourself to walk in accordance with God's grace. Many a times we apply too much pressure on human beings. That's why people commit suicide. They commit suicide because they're just saying, it's too complicated for me. That's why some people go into depression because they say, there's just no solution for me. Other people break up things that they should not be breaking up because they, it's just too complicated. But if you operate on that channel and that frequency, even when you are in jail, you sing and pray and you pray until you are free. Even when you lose it all, they die and you get so sick, you just like Job, you stay on the channel and the frequency until you get healed. Because that's the God we're talking about. Even when your brother strip you of everything that you have and sell you into slavery, you lose your relatives, they turn against you, you stay on the same frequency and channel until you become a dreamer. And you counsel kings. Even when your, your, your body says you can't bear a child, you are too old, you stay on the same frequency and channel until an heir comes. Even when you are a Mary, that everybody thinks, well, this one is not married. God says, I've identified you. You are going to give birth to a savior. God can take nothing and make it something. But it takes staying on the frequency and the channel. Today I'm laying a foundation for talking about certain things in your life next week that need to be changed. But I couldn't get there first before reminding you on you know what this requires? It requires you to have a relationship with God. Or not just a relationship, a sound and active relationship with God. If you are a Christian because by faith, you know when, they, when you complete application forms, they say, what's your religion? Bantu, what, 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 and you say Christian, tick. Now I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about a real relationship with what? With God. Knowing him as what? Your personal savior. It is once you know him as a personal savior that you'll operate on the basis of faith. And you'll begin seeing him. But for as long as it's still a religion that defines your status, that's intellectual understanding of God. It takes you nowhere. 
we were touring somewhere and this man was busy taking us out. I think by the time we're done, in a space of an hour, we had seen 10 chapels and churches. And I said to this talk, uh, sorry, can I just ask you something? All these churches that you have taken us to, how many people here still go to church? says, my friend, nobody goes to church here. These are monuments of what we used to be. But a majority of the people here are Christians. But probably about 20%, if not less, actually have an active relationship with God. So when you talk to them about faith, they don't understand. When you talk about visions from God, they don't understand. And you can only understand this when you have an active relationship. Let's meet next week to talk about your problems. Next week we'll talk about what? Your problems. It's that part, which is part two of, and the things that you have.